Hi there, Steph. Thanks for popping by. So today's card um, was made with a long fun stamp set, Life is Good. Um, and I have uh, bought that stamp set with the dies. I don't buy a lot of stamp sets with dies, but here I did. And I did a card previously where I did masking. I didn't share it online, but uh, I did do one. And here I thought it'd be nice to use the dies because I bought them. So I've decided to stamp all my images with some Memento Toxic do Black on some Nina. And what was cool is that I could use all my little bits of Nina that I don't really know what to do with. Because uh, obviously I tend to use like card panels. Uh, so little bits I don't really, you know, they just get, they stay there until I finally find a use for them. So it was really cool to do little die cuts because I can actually use these little bits of paper because Nina is quite expensive so you don't really want to leave it aside. It's a bit, you know, if you can find a use for it, it's better. So anyway, I did. Um, so I stamped with Memento, I think I said that, <laughs> and I started doing some basic copy colouring. Uh, I went above the ages in some places so I use a... Um, Sakura white gel pen to co correct the edges and it works really well so you know if you do get beyond don't be too scared and I mean it's quite easy to go beyond with Copics because if you saturate your paper to get good blending uh, which is not the case here <laughs> but uh, if you saturate your paper then you tend to go a little bit beyond the edge so I do normally like to retrace the outline in black but here it was die cut so I didn't do it but if it'd been like one image I probably would have um, it's um, for the colouring, um, as I said, basically colouring, some blending, some not too much actually. Um, in terms of like everything that's sand, so the castle and the dune, I try to do the dotty technique, I think it works really well and it looks really cute. Um, I find that it helps to have juicy markers. Obviously, I think like everybody, I don't have every single colour of refill, so not all my markers are really juicy. Uh, but for example, for the dune, I have the sand marker, the sand colour, and I have a refill for that. So that really helps me get that effect, which is not that obvious here on the little dune, but it will be on the castle later. And oh, I love that little hammock thing. Uh, I feel like I'm on holiday just looking at it. Um, then I did the dot on the little crab as well because I thought it was quite cute. I think I did see that maybe, I don't know, a year or two ago um, on animals and I think it looked really good and I've been doing that on crabs for quite a while actually. Um, on crabs or fishes, sorry, but you know, see, see animals that could... Well, crabs don't have scales, but uh, like fishes with scales, it looks quite cool. So here for the castle, uh, I'm using three different shades as well. My darkest, darkest shade, sorry, is quite um, dry. I think it's sepia. Um, I have chamois, which is my medium, and my light one is sand because it's really juicy. It helps me blend uh, the darkest one, which is quite dry. So I make it work, you know. Um, and then, you know, three different shades for the little bucket. And I try to kind of pick like, you know, rainbow colours, not only, but I like to incorporate the rainbow colours. I find that when I look on Instagram, the card that made me say wow the most are the cards with rainbow colours on it. I don't know why, I just really like it. Uh, <laughs> that's just me. But uh, then, for that reason, I kind of try to incorporate the rainbow colours into my card just to make them happy, really. Um, I don't know. It's a visual thing for me. It might not work for everybody, but it's a visual thing for me. Here, uh, for the little sandals, I thought they were really cute. I wanted to do like a little sandal path, uh, but in the end I did that inside the card rather than outside because my front was actually quite saturated. I had a lot going on there. Um, so, yeah, basic colouring. But it's quite pleasant to do a little bit of basic colouring from time to time as well. And I've decided to stack um, my little lighthouse, I think it's called, uh, on onto two other lighthouses just to give it a bit of depth then in the end you don't really see it that much to be quite nice with you so here that's me kind of prepping my card and seeing where I'm going with it and then I thought oh I want to add the C and so I colored uh, with Prismacolor I was trying to find a way so that I could use both mediums on one card just trying to give it a bit of interest uh, I've done a card which may be published before or after that one, so I'm not quite sure when you see it, but uh, where I did some bubble colouring with Prismacolor, and then that kind of inspired me to want to do a sunset in the background of that card, you, which you will see after. And then I thought, oh, it'd be nice if I added more elements with the Prismacolor. So here you go, with the C, it gives a bit of texture, it's less flat. I mean, I love Copics because they blend so well. I mean, I had... Um, what are they called? Sorry. Um, Pro markers. And I, I mean, it was okay, but I never, ever, ever get any close to the result I get with Copics. And I mean, you know, it could be a 
I didn't have the experience and the practice and I've co I've colored with Copics a lot since then uh, but I never really got I didn't think the blending was never as good as you get with Copic and I mean Copics are pricey but I think there's a reason for that they are good markers um, so I'm not sponsored by Copic must be <laughs> so here I'm doing my sunshine and I'm not too happy I'm like oh that's not blended very well it looks not so good <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in the end, I wasn't too happy with the sea, to be honest with you, and the sky. Uh, but I was actually quite happy with the sun. Uh, and the reason is because uh, I use that color blend colorless blender that you can see right now. And when I bought it, I was thinking, oh, it doesn't make much of a difference. But on a car like that, I actually think it does. It makes a hell of a difference for me from my, you know, from where I look at it. Obviously, you put the little die cuts on it and it kind of builds your card. But it's nice if the, your background is, you know, well made. It helps. Uh, so here I made a little hole in the hammock. And then, uh, is it hammock? In French it's hammock. Hammock. So, yeah. Uh, I put the little crab in there. And because uh, I wanted to make it look like it was chilling on the sea. On the, on this little private island. Maybe Necker Island. Uh, so here I try, I did try to blend the sea. But uh, the, the result was not perfect. And then um, I stamped the um, island twice more. And I made one look like if it was rock, the one on the left, and one like if it was another island, but a bit more propped up, you know, it comes out of the sea. So I did the colouring off camera, because it's exactly the same than the one I did earlier for that tiny island. And then I put all my little, I glue all my little elements onto the card. And just in case you wondered, you may see it from time to time, but maybe not always, I used the um, advanced tape glider, double-sided uh tape let's call it a tape um and i've used that for a few months and i was hesitating because it was really pricey and the refill are quite expensive but um it does last quite a while maybe not quite as long as i hoped it depends how many cards you do it depends uh there was a point i was making a lot of cards then i started sewing so i've done less less cards but i mean it's still quite handy it does take quite a lot of space so you know i have to put it in a drawer because it didn't fit in my carousel um, but it's still quite handy, um, and I used to have these tiny tape rolls, which I think most people would have. Uh, I had that for quite a long time, and then I'm pretty sure it's because it was so humid where I live, because I live in England. Um, it started to kind of stick to itself, and when I was trying to get the glue out, it would not come out of the roller. And I ended up uh, putting it in a tiny Tupperware, sealed Tupperware, so that it wouldn't get humid. But then I still had problems. And, you know, in the end, I was just like, I'm wasting so much time with glue. It's ridiculous. And that's kind of where I jumped a step and bought the ATG. And I don't have that problem with ATG. So it might be the quality of the glue itself. I don't know. But with ATG, although it's, it's a bit of a handful because <laughs> it's quite big. Um, so far, it's worked quite well for me. So anyway, going back to the colouring, after my sky, I'm not 100% satisfied with the sky, but I'm being picky, um, I think, <laughs> it's just one card, so I decided to add a little bit of glitter, I added a few birds in the sky, I think it's quite nice and you always add something in the empty spaces between my little scenes, um, and inside I put, I did try to put glitter there and I thought, oh that's not working on the little shoes, um, I put a lot of glitter on the outside, a lot, you know, a certain amount of glitter on the outside which is not too obvious on the photos but it will be to the eyes for the person who opens it and that's basically a card for um, one of James's teacher to say thank you for looking after him all year round because uh, you know they're looking after our babies so I thought it would be nice um, and I did use my glaze pen to go over the greeting and then I thought oh it'd be cool if I could add something funny so I went through my stash and I found some little googly eyes um, so they didn't quite fit so I just had to cover the dirt the deep sorry and uh, add another one at the end and you know it's almost like you almost can't see the difference uh, I just went over the little birds as well and uh, that's it really it's quite straightforward but um, I think it was quite cool to be able to use quite a lot of the elements from a die set because there's so many little bits and I like to use you know, not all of them, but most of them. So anyway, it was quite cool. So I hope you find that video interesting or inspiring. Um, I hope maybe that makes you want to use crayons and Copic on the same card. Um, and, you know, you may not, but I hope you may have. <laughs> uh, and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And don't forget to click the little bell. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day. Bye.